Welcome to the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. I'm Benjamin Bernstein, your host, brought to you by my new book, Instant Divine Assistance, Your Complete Guide to Fast and Easy Spiritual Awakening, Healing, and More. Available on Amazon, click the link in the show notes, or just go search Instant Divine Assistance. Today, I'll be talking about how to stay grounded and focused, and this episode was inspired by a life coaching session I recently did for one of my clients. I will call her Emma to protect her privacy. She's been working with me for over three years, and this was our 69th life coaching session. So she is aspiring to a full-time metaphysical career, but she's had trouble committing the time she needs to build her metaphysical practice. I've been working with her and counseling her. She works a day job, and she has no problem working long hours for her employer, but making time for her own career development, that's a whole different thing. I'm going to give you just a tiny bit of astrology here. If you're not into astrology, just think of the Charlie Brown specials where the teacher goes, wah, 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 wah. ignore that part and just tune into the English. Uh, her chart has actually no planets in Earth signs, and Earth is really good for grounding and staying consistent and reliable. What's interesting is the only significant Earth in her chart is her seventh house cusp. We call that the descendant, and that's other people. So she's got Virgo there. That means she's happy to serve and stay grounded for other people but not so much for herself. That's about all the astrology I'm going to give you. But basically, we've got a chart with no Earth. How can we compensate? Now, you don't have to know your astrology to benefit from this episode. If you have a problem grounding or staying focused on stuff, I have a lot of tips for you today on how you can stay more grounded and focused on what you want to get done. One idea is to get earthing pads. There's a wonderful book called Earthing, E-A-R-T-H-I-N-G. This book describes how even if you're in an indoor space, it can be as if you're outside standing on the ground, which of course is grounding, obviously, right? So these devices hook into the grounding plug of a three-prong outlet. If you didn't know that, that wire goes directly to the earth. They actually put a copper wire in the ground and it's a ground current. And therefore, if you hook one of these devices up to that little round hole in your three-prong outlet, then you are grounded as if you were outside. I have one right now under my desk. I have a special sheet on our bed where it's grounded into the earth and it's as if we were sleeping outside energetically. So one way to get more grounded is to have grounding pads hooked into the grounding plug of a three-prong outlet that you put your bare feet on under your desk or you sleep on at night. That can help a lot. Another way is to use grounding stones and crystals. I've done this for years as a shaman and today is the first episode I've gone to a new resource to help me out. I don't know if you've heard of the chat GPT. It's this new amazing online thing it's free for anyone you go ask it a question and this artificial intelligence gives amazing answers so i'm going to tell you what it told me when i said which stones and crystals are best for grounding chat gpt replied there are several stones and crystals that are believed to be effective for grounding and promoting a sense of stability and connection to the earth some common choices include black tourmaline this is a popular choice for grounding as it is believed to help clear negative energy and promote feelings of stability and security. Hematite. Hematite is a dense, heavy stone that is often used for grounding and centering. It is believed to help balance the mind and body and to promote a sense of calm and clarity. Obsidian. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that is believed to have grounding properties. It is thought to help bring negative or unbalanced energies to the surface where they can be released and transformed. Smoky quartz. Smoky quartz is a type of quartz that is known for its grounding and balancing properties. It is believed to help release negativity and to promote feelings of stability and calm. Red jasper. Red jasper is a grounding stone that is believed to help release negativity and promote feelings of stability and security. It is also thought to be helpful for connecting to the earth and the natural world. It is important to note that the effectiveness of stones and crystals for grounding or any other purpose is largely a matter of personal belief and subjective experience. It is always a good idea to choose a stone that resonates with you and to use it in a way that feels meaningful and helpful to you. And all that is direct quote from ChatGPT. Based on my years of experience with stones and crystals, it's dead accurate. So take it from ChatGPT. Those are some stones or crystals you can use to help you be more grounded. You could have them in your environment, like on your working area, on your desk. You could have them as jewelry where you're wearing them on your body. You could have them in your pockets. Any time they're around and near you, it's really great. So stones and crystals can be powerful allies for grounding. Another approach is to use I am declarations. You could just declare to the universe, I am grounded. I am consistent in my work. I am focused on my objective. 
And this kind of I am declaration is very powerful. And some people find that very effective. Another approach, similar but not quite the same, is to partner with spiritual allies specifically for help with grounding. Once again, I went to ChatGPT. I asked it what spiritual allies are best for grounding, and here's what it replied. Spiritual allies are beings or energies that one can call upon for support, guidance, or healing. In the context of grounding, some people find it helpful to work with spiritual allies that are associated with the earth or with stability and security. Some examples of spiritual allies that may be helpful for grounding include earth elementals. Earth elementals are beings that are thought to represent the energy of the earth. They may include fairies, gnomes, and other nature spirits. Some people believe that communicating with or calling upon earth elementals can help them feel more connected to the earth and more grounded. Ancestors. Many cultures believe that the spirits of their ancestors can offer guidance and support from beyond the physical realm. Some people find it helpful to connect with their ancestors and ask for their help in feeling grounded and connected to their roots. Nature deities. Many cultures have deities associated with the natural world, such as Gaia in Greek mythology or Pachamama in Inca mythology. Some people find it helpful to connect with these deities and ask for their help in feeling grounded and connected to the earth. Some people find it helpful to connect with the spirits of animals, such as bears, wolves, or elephants, which are often associated with grounding and stability. And then it has a similar caveat that it gave last time. It is important to note that the effectiveness of spiritual allies for grounding or any other purpose is largely a matter of personal belief and subjective experience. It is always a good idea to choose spiritual allies that resonate with you and to work with them in a way that feels meaningful and helpful to you. So who knew ChatGPT was so tuned into metaphysical stuff? I had no idea. Anyhow, I once again find that to be highly accurate, and any of those approaches to connecting with any of those kinds of allies could be very helpful in helping you stay grounded. Here's another thing. I've used this with clients sometimes and with myself. You can visualize roots growing from the bottoms of your feet into the center of the earth all the way down. So you just imagine the journey of those roots starting at the surface and working their way all the way down to the center of the earth. Then you imagine the earth energy coming up through those roots, coming up all the way to the top of your head and flowing back down, just grounding you beautifully. And you can just stop there if grounding is all you need. However, you can amplify the technique further by imagining a comparable root system going up into heaven, heavenly roots. And then you imagine the energy of heaven or the highest divine energy flowing down that system into your body all the way down to your feet and back up. So now you've brought the earth and the higher together. And if you imagine them blending in the heart chakra, which is the central chakra of the body, that can be fabulous. And that not only grounds you, but it brings the celestial or heavenly energy in. And then you've got embodied awakening, which of course you can also get to with my embodied awakening invocation, which I cover in the very first episode of this podcast, if you go back into the library. So that's yet another way you can do that with that visualization of roots down into the earth and if you wish roots up into the heaven as well. So that's the key ideas on staying grounded. In terms of staying focused, I cover a couple of tips on that in chapter eight of my Instant Divine Assistance book, and I'll share those ideas here. One is to set phone alarm reminders several times a day. Have an alarm go off and have a little note come up. Am I focused on my project or whatever phrasing you want to use? In my book, I say to use phone alarms to ask if you're in embodied awakening right now, but of course you can remind yourself to check on anything. If you work with a calendar on a different device, like a computer or a tablet, you could have calendar reminders pop up as well. Any device would work for the reminders. Another way is to get an accountability partner. I go deep into why that's a great idea in the book. But the basic idea is if you have an accountability partner and they are checking in with you saying, did you do this thing that you said you were gonna do? because you ask them to check in with you, there's actually a 95% chance you'll do it. The odds of you actually completing something rise astronomically if you have an accountability partner actually checking in with you. And that's what I got for you this time. So that's some tips on how you can stay grounded and how you can stay focused. And I surely hope that's helpful to you. I'd love to know if this was helpful for you. So if there's a comment area, please feel free to leave a comment or you can email me at benjamin at astroshaman.com. Thanks so much for checking into this episode of Awaken, Heal, and Thrive. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already, and I look forward to checking in with you again next week. If you enjoyed this podcast, you might also like my free online mini course. It's called Instant Divine Assistance, your free guide to fast and easy awakening and healing. It'll teach you how to invoke your own embodied awakening and healing and put it all into a simple daily practice. 
You can also check out my best-selling book that develops these ideas further. It's also called Instant Divine Assistance. In its first week, it hit number one on Amazon in 11 categories and has tons of five-star reviews. Finally, I have an online membership called Awakening Plus, where you can significantly speed up your spiritual evolution. Its slogan is also the name of this podcast, Awaken, Heal, and Thrive. You'll find links to all this wonderful stuff in the show notes.